Grace and peace. This is Pastor T.J. Thomas from the city of Zion, the Mount Zion Church in the wonderful city of Toledo, Ohio. And I am excited. You can see compassion on my shirt. And this is a compassion reach to each and every one of you. We've been a partner with Compassion International now for several years. And I know the mission and vision of Compassion International is global. And I am glad to partner with them in pulling children up and out of poverty one child at a time. During this pandemic season, all of us have been challenged. All of us have had trying times. And if we've been challenged, you can imagine what those children are experiencing in countries that are far uh, less resourced than ours. Well, beloved, I believe that our mission is global, not just community, but global. And I want to challenge 20 of you to partner with us this year in pulling not 10, but 20 children out of poverty, one child at a time through Jesus Christ. I am excited about this and we invite you to partner with us as we partner with Compassion International to take the mission of Jesus Christ global. I'm counting on you and I know you're gonna do it our Compassion Sunday is going to be the first Sunday in August of this year. And I know we'll be in a better place with this vaccine and pandemic. And I know that what we do for the least of those, what we do for the kingdom children, I believe it touches hearts around the world. So listen, let's get ready. We're going to do it. I'm counting on you. Let's go. Godly Sunday morning, everybody. Welcome to virtual worship with Pastor Thomas J. Thomas in City of Zion Church in Toledo, Ohio. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord once again. And once again, he is worthy of all praise. He's worthy of our worship. So prepare your heart, prepare your space, lay aside every heavy weight, invite your family into the room, and let's prepare to give the Lord what he is so deserving of. Go ahead, take a second, click on like, share this worship experience to your page, and don't forget to use the comments below the video to engage and connect together with the other worshipers. For today is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Delight yourself in the Lord who will give you the desires of your heart. For every challenge that today brings, Rejoice in the Lord and count it all joy. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for your life. This is your call to worship. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but the week I had is good to be in the presence of God today. So I said, since you bring out the time, it's Us and continuing to cover and protect us. 
Help us to hear from you in directing us to confident, confidently fulfill our purpose and your will over our lives. Give us complete understanding in knowing that all things will work together for the good of those who believe in you. So give us strip to not get weary in our well-doing, but help us to stay focused on your word daily so our hearts and thoughts can be cleansed. As we walk with you, cleanse us from insecurities, cleanse us from intimidation, and cleanse us from jealousy because we are all fearfully and wonderfully made by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, so it is. giving him a fresh yes. present we were saying I will I will meaning I'm going to I'm going to somebody might be saying I'm going I'm going to give me yes I'm going to give me yes uh uh come on we going to say I say yes Lord yes to
will bless the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. Good morning. It's such a good time to be able to share with you. I, I give all reverence to God who is my creator, to him who is the most high, our the only living God. We also we honor the city of Zion and we give double honor to the angel, to the set man, to the prophet, the priest of this house, the pastor of the city of Zion, and the district overseer of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Toledo District. Also the national officer serving as the overseer of customer care on a national level. It is good to be here. We bless God for this opportunity. I, I want to take this time to say thank you. This is a, a new move, but I'm willing because of the faithfulness of him and the promise I have with God at every opportunity. My, the discussion today is about 21 years of service to one congregation. It is more than a notion to stay at one place with one congregation for 21 years. 21 years. Man, I have to give him his props because folk are always leaving and always trying to get out of what they're doing. But when you understand your call, you understand that you didn't just show up here. You, you actually were sent here and God gave you a destiny that you must fulfill. And so, Pastor, I want you to know, overseer, uh, I want you to know, Bishop, I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry, I, that slipped out. But I want you to know, my friend, is that I am proud to be your friend and I'm proud of the moment and space in time that you have given for this expression. I want to turn to, I want to pray, and then we want to turn to the text that I want to talk a little bit, some points, and just my, my, my whole object that I want to do is just to talk to you. Um, I, I know there are other people you could have gotten, but I thank God for the opportunity. Our Father, gracious Father, you who are mighty in all of your works, the creator of the ends of the earth, Father, the, the one that sets our destiny, that one that gives us elasticity in our movement, allowing us to bounce back and understand you would never leave us. Let us walk to the edge of our existence and you bring us right back. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. I lift up this pastor and I thank you again for him, his diligence, his love, his commitment to you. Father, his ministry to those of us that are around him and those afar. I pray, oh God, that this message that you have given, that you have talked to us about, will be able to encourage his spirit. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want to turn your attention um, to the um, 15th chapter of the book of Genesis. And th this is a familiar passage. And I want to read the first six verses so that we can get on the same page. Uh, this passage is... It's set up, and it says as following, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, Abram in a vision, saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. 
Ben Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir. But one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, look, now toward heaven and count the stars. And if you are able to number them, he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed God. He believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him for righteousness. Now, in the Message Bible, it, it says it like this. And he believed God. And, and, and I really, I, I'm not, we have started this, um, God has given us a word that we've been stretching and pushing. And I just, I came to say that, that I want you, as you go in from the 21st year, going into the 22nd year, to pause for a moment and give God a fresh yes. Now, I'm telling you, I've been struggling with trying to understand and get this together. And, 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 and one, of the, um, one of my elders came in and they talked and they saw my frustration. And, and the one, one thing they, they asked the question, what was wrong with the fresh yes? They hadn't seen the text. They hadn't seen anything. And I said, okay, God, what you telling me? And he says, if you look at the chapter, a lot of things have gone on over the 21 years. And pastor, if I can, just for a moment, talk to you about the reality of, of the 21 years. I understand that, that, that the 20 years first, before the 21st year, was already rough. Now, I'm telling you, by pastoring God's people is, is, is not an easy job. It's not an easy job, but it is a... It is a possible job. What happened in the 21st year that you had to work through the completion of it, you also had to do it in the middle, right? Right from the beginning all the way up to present in a pandemic, in, in, a, in a worldwide pandemic, a time where, where folk are sick and dying and isolated and going through, but I don't want us to hang on that. I want you to see that the pandemic of the 21st year of your administration and how you were working is, is, is somewhat identical to every leader that God has in the scriptures and today. It, there are seasons that while you are actually serving the God, the God that they become unbearable. They, they, they seem like uh, Paul, Paul says, well, well, use me as a testimony. He, he says that what I, what I did was, was that I was in, in a shipwreck and I was also in the middle of some things where I had to stay in the water for three weeks. He said, I, I had gone through so much stuff and then I had some stuff that I could not get rid of. It just seemed like, he said, I was pressed beyond measure. I'm sure you'll agree with me that, that 2020 pushed your 21st year beyond measure. But there, there had to be moments that you had to be as Abraham is in the text, questioning God. Wondering, is it so? There's times even now today, I do it myself. But I have to learn that in the midst of my questioning, I've got to stop and give him a fresh yes. No, no, no. Let's, let's be honest. 
God can handle my question. Look, look, the reality is, are you willing to be honest and actually give him a real yes after he answers your question? Look at the text, and I want to explain the, the, the context of what's going on in the whole makeup of this text, the context of this particular pericope that, that, that is written by Moses. Here's what, what's going on. You have to understand that Abram left his family and buried his father, left, buried his brother, brought his nephew with him. He left at an age of 75 because he heard the voice of God and he, got, he was willing to tell God what he was going to do. And in chapter 12, he was 75 years old. And at 75, he didn't have any children of his own. But God said that if you, if you do like I tell you to do, I will give you a child, and you will have a nation, and I'll give you a land that the nation can live on, okay? And here's what he says, and he, he works him up, and, and the reality is, is that, Adam, that Abraham said yes. He said, yes, I'll do it. I'll go. When they were asking him, now listen how he starts off. He leaves, and they say, where are you going? And then he said, I don't know. He said, well, how will you know when I, you get there? He said, I don't know. All I know is that he said that he would lead me and he would walk with me. And I'm, I'm telling you something. He said, I'll be there. And he said, when you get there, you'll know it. Isn't that crazy? I know 21 years ago, I, I know when you got to the church, I, he was telling you he'll make it a great church. He'll make it be wonderful. He'll make it be prosperous. And I know that there had to be times that you, you just said, I'm walking by faith. And I just came to let you know that in the midst of your walking, it requires a fresh yes. Let me, let me explain what a fresh yes is. Fresh, when I say fresh yes, I mean you have to be yielding. You have to yield, and that means that you have to meet God on his terms. Yeah, now I'm, I'm going to show you how we're, we're Abraham met God on his terms. Uh, also, you have to be expecting to hear from God. It's terrible to be walking with God or call yourself walking with him and don't expect God to say anything to you. I know there are believers in the world today and they're walking around here and they're acting like, like, like God doesn't talk. But, but Deuteronomy tells me, Jesus repeats Deuteronomy and he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but he shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He quoted Deuteronomy and he used it in a present which means that God was talking from Deuteronomy into Luke. And guess what? He's still talking today. And you, we can't be leaders and not expect to hear from God. That means I turn up and when I want to hear from him, I expect to hear from him. I'm looking to hear from him. I want him to show up. I'm going to show you in the text where his expectation was met and God shows up in the midst of it all. And, and, and the yes, here's the hard part. If you're going to give him a fresh yes, you have to be able to surrender. Yep, yep. Surrendering is saying that you're willing to be open to anything God puts in front of you. Any, any task, any trial, any situation that he says, I need you to go here or I need you to go there. It's about a yes that must come in the midst of your journey with God. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, let's look at this text again. Excuse me. I, I seem like I'm going back and forth, but I'm trying to pull this together because this is important for you going into your 22nd year for the church. And the, they don't understand that your their destiny is tied to you. So the 21st year is not just a 21st year ending. It is also a promotional year that tells you I came through some stuff. I was able to get through. And now that it's 
over, I know I can expect promotion. Okay, but here's here's what goes on. It says that the 15th verse, let me take this verse and just look at it. The 14th chapter of this particular verse, it, it, it talks about the weight of the wrestle of how he had to rescue his nephew. Yeah, because it says after these things. And if you say after these things, that means something happened before it. With it happening before chapter 15, it was the restlessness and the uncouth of a nephew or a baggage that he had to reassemble an army to go get him. He had to waste some time to go get him so that he, and, and get back so that he would live. Isn't it crazy how, 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 how the very people that live up under you, you have to waste time to go get it. And what he says is he realized that this bothered, I thought it was the fight that was bothering him. I thought it was the war that was bothering him. But look at the text. Here's what it says. After these things, the word of the Lord came to, to Abram in a vision. That means that after he got finished fighting and he had sat down and he was chilling, it says the word of God came to him. And what's the first thing that it says that God says to him? Listen, here comes that expecting here. here. He says, he says, don't be afraid. Well, he won. If he won, why would he be afraid? I, I could wrestle with that, but that's not what he's telling me. I, the reality is, is that I was trying to figure that out because, and then God says, I'm your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Compiled in that phrase, he, he, he looks at Abram and says, I'm your protection from the past, and I'm your protection in the present, and I still have a future for you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, listen to that. He, he tells him, don't you get caught up in the external environmental things that are going on that you forget I brought you. I've been protecting you. I've been keeping you. I know I stepped aside a little bit to let you feel the wind of the adversities that were coming upon you, but I held you and I kept you. Oh, 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 pastor, I, I want you to understand. I know that, that these 21 years have not been easy. I know that folk tried to backstab you and, and they told on you and they lied on you and they did things that tried to mess you up, but you need to stand tall and give God that fresh yes because we got to agree he was our shield. Uh, there were churches that closed, but the city is still open. There were pastors that died, but you're still preaching. There were people that thought you wouldn't make it and they're gone. He's been your shield. Oh, yes, he has. Yes, he has. He's been your shield. He's been, and when I say shield, I know we're not warlike people, so we don't understand. The shield means that I've been your protector. And he's been protecting us all along. He's allowed us to feel, he's allowed us to feel a few things that would let us know the, the note of the impact of what. It, no, it wasn't to know the impact of what was hitting us. It was to know what God was shielding us from. Yes. While you were out trying to do ministry. And there were things out there in the air that was trying to attack and kill. God shielded us. David, David said that he, he, he's been my shield while he was running from Absalom. He understood he wasn't running by himself while he was getting away from getting away from 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 Saul. He, he wasn't running by himself. He had a shield. He had protection. And I, I know we stand to stand to agree. That. I have to agree that, yes, he's been my protector. 
riding up and down the highway, visiting and seeing from one end to the other, plane after plane. And yet God lets you get up the next morning and continue what he's doing. He's been our protector. Look at here. He says also what I mean, that's from the past, that's for the right now and the present. And he says, and I am your exceedingly great reward. That's future. He's telling us in this passage that your fresh yes ought to be wrapped up in expectation. Oh, you, we can't be, you ever seen people that are beat up so bad that, that, that they're satisfied with just not fighting? And that's a low expectation. He, he says that don't let your environment, don't let what you've been through steal your joy. Don't let the fact of what they do to you or have done to you make you forget who you called, make you forget who called you, make you forget who promised you. He said, I'm still your great exceeding reward. Hmm. He says that regardless to what the 21st year or 2020 brought in, he said, I still am your reward. Uh, but here, here's the killing part that, that got me, because what Abraham was feared was not, was not losing the fight. He wasn't worried about not getting lot. He wasn't worried about anybody getting killed. He said, he said, Lord, I know you know I'm afraid, but my afraid is about not having a child. You, you promised me a son. Here it is. And see, that's one thing that if you're going to give, if you're going to give God a fresh yes, you have to learn how to fight with the first preliminary promise in your view. He, he's in there protecting his brother's, his brother's son with his own son in view. He said the promise was not that I would not lose wars. The promise was not that I would not. He said I, I had to win because I don't have a son. <laughs> oh. See, there are some things that we need to gather up that sometimes the bad has to come before the good because in the bad, we're being made stronger so that we can handle what he's going to do. This is what he said. He said, I don't have, he says, I, I, look, there's nobody in my house that I have sired. He said, and, and the problem is the person that's born in my house, that's Eliezer, he's the only one he's going to inherit. The, and God, listen to what happened. God began to hear his cry. He began to understand the fear. But he said, that's why I told you. He said, that ain't going to be so. I told you. After this fight that you won, here's what you got to understand. He said, the one that's coming out of you. Mm is the one will be your heir. You're going to have your own son. Now, what was messing with Abraham? Abram. His age. <sighs> yep. I know that's not your problem, but, 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 but don't ever let yourself become bothered by the fact of time. I, I hate to tell you this, that even though it's been 21 long years, if we really check into the time in eternity, you've only been at the city for half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I just made 45 minutes. Ain't that something? And all that we're going through, it seems like it's been a long time. And God is saying, I'm waiting on you to get on my timetable because time is not an element for me. 
Time, time, time doesn't mean anything to me. He says, you got to understand. And what I want you to see is that Abraham was basing the promise of God. Oh, the fulfillment of God. He was basing it on the reality of his own being. And God was saying, I'm using your being to prove to you who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to stay in my teaching point because I, I, I get excited. When God says to that which looks dead, I'm going to give it life. He says, I know, I know what you're talking about. He said, I'll give you credit because you were fighting because you wanted to have a discussion with me. You were clearing everything else out of the way because really you wanted to renege. You thought I reneged on your promise, on my promise. But here's what he says. He says, I promised you would have a child from your wife and there would be nothing else. Boy. Abraham said, but I'm at this point. He says, but I'm 85 years old. I, I've been waiting for 10 years. Man. But, but you, he, you, you need to stop and go down the loins of Abraham to David. And David had a waiting problem as well. And he said that I, I waited and I waited. And I waited and I waited. He said, but he said, but but the testimony is, is that I waited. And David said that I waited for 17 years. He said that I waited for the reality of what God had promised for 17 years. I waited. So at 10 is nothing to wait on. At, and here he is warning and wondering, I'm getting older. There is no biological clock with God. Man, he says, I purposely am trying to get you ready. Isn't that wonderful? God brings us through pandemics, brings us through trials and tribulation. And he, he learns how to how to shepherd us as we go. Understanding that it ain't time for my word to be fulfilled in you. We can't see it, but it's right here in the text that he kept arguing his potential. He kept arguing his potential was running out and God was saying, no, your potential is running up. The longer, the longer I make you wait, the more interest you get on the promise. I don't know who needs to hear that, but I need to let you know that your fresh yes ought to be based on the fact if he didn't give it to me today, he's, he's letting it build up until he's ready to deliver it. And whenever he delivers it, what he's going to do is going to have more interest with it from the time that he told me to the time that he delivers. Oh, I'm glad. 21 years have passed because now you know him differently. You don't, you know him better than what folks said he would be because you have experienced him in the deadness of your own ministry when you got there, in the deadness of everything around you. He told you to speak life to it. He told you to hang on in there and where you have brought the church wrong ways and yet it does not even compare to where you're going to take it. Uh, yes, 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 yes. He, he keeps looking at him and he says you, he says here, here, he, he, you, I told you you'd have an heir. I t this is the only argument and the heir is the full the heir is the fulfillment of the promise. And so he's arguing the promise. He's actually telling God, I, I, I've been through so much stuff and you still have not delivered. And God is on the other side telling him, listen, I'm going to deliver. He said, well, how will I know you're going to do what you do? He says, I tell you what, go get your own ritual. 
You know how you used to take the heifer and cut her in half and then you would take a dove and cut it in half. And then the two people that were going to walk through, that were going to walk through and make the covenant together. He said, then I will walk through it with you saying that if I don't keep my promise to you, Abraham, if I don't keep my promise to you, I'll die myself. But if you find out in, in the chapter down there, he did a greater thing. It says that when it came time for Abraham and God to make the covenant, Abraham fell asleep. Oh, wow. Who is he going to make the covenant? Here's what God did. He made the covenant with himself. That may I kill me. May I be like the heifers if I don't bring to pass what I promised. And sir, I, I, I just came by to tell you, God is faithful. God will keep you. God will let you extend all that you have in order that you will rely on him. In order that you will understand and keep the promise that he made. In for, he promised to make you great. He promised to take you to higher heights. He promised to make the city prosperous. He promised that everything you touch was going to, be, was going to prosper. That curses would fall off at your preaching. That lives would be changed at your teaching. That he tells you don't worry about questioning me because I got your back. He says I promised myself. Ah, uh, I did, I did. And so for that, I need to understand I can't sit and keep asking him questions. I just need to do what he did in verse 6. See, if you read it sometimes in the King James, what it says is, and he believed in the Lord. And, and I, I got to tell you, the belief in this scripture is not totally like I'd like to see it, but 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 if you go to the original text, it says that and and as God may review the promise with him, it says that he became stable in what he was doing. It literally means that he became overwhelmed with confidence in what God was saying. There's a difference there in that text because just to say you believe in the Lord is, is, is what <coughs> regular people would do. <coughs> Folks that don't have, that don't have a, a destiny, that don't have a promise. And because the promise is made up of, your, of his words, the text really suggests that at the renewing of the words of God, that Abram said, I believe you, God. I believe what you're saying. And what I'm trying to get you to understand, it ain't enough just to believe in the Lord. Yes, he is El Shaddai. Yes, he is the great one. Yes, he is the creator. Yes, he is the shepherd of our souls. But you got to get to a point that when he talks to you, you have to make up in your mind and declare, I believe what you're saying, God. The Bible says that when Abram actually believed what he was saying, it says that God accounted him for being righteous. And the word righteous deals with the fact that God is right. And that meant that his faith moved him to a plateau that said, I invite you to be part of my plan. And I don't know. <laughs> mm. But I believe 21 years ago, when you walked around the city of Zion. And God was telling you, I got you. Success is written on you. I give you integrity. I give you the patience. I'm going to equip you with everything. And every now and then, you got to remember and ask yourself, why is it taking so long? But 
then go to eternity and realize that it's not taking long at all. After 21 years, God is due a fresh yes. Right now, while he has proven I can carry you through a pandemic, yes is required. Right now, while he has allowed you to restructure a whole ministry, giving you the leeway to do as he wants you to do, he deserves a fresh yes. Please know that a fresh yes is not another yes, but it's a yes to what you said yes to when you first got here. Yes is waiting on your lips. And if you say yes, God will finish his promise. Look here, because in chapter 15, he was at, at the point of saying what you're doing. And God says, I'm going to do it. And the conversation ends with him saying yes. And so in chapter 16, he did get a little stray and he thought there could be another plan, but God said, that ain't the plan. But over in chapter 21, it says that while he was 100 years old, he'll be able to do what he couldn't do at 85. And I'm glad to tell you that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand and keep your pledge with God and stay fresh with him, I want you to know that uh, the promise will fulfill. He will give you what he said. And so today, my answer will be, yes, God. I am willing to meet, I'm meeting you, not just willing to do it, but I'm meeting you on your terms. His terms is continued faith. His terms is being humble. His terms is knowing your value. I'm willing to meet you there. Expect you to hear. Yes, I'm clearing out all the other noise. I'm clearing out the lot noise. I'm clearing out the Sarah noise. I'm clearing out the gang Sarah's noise so I can hear you clearly. Yeah. And God, I surrender. I know I thought I had a way that I know I wanted to do it. I know that I thought that it was going to be done the way I thought. And I had it etched in my mind how you were going to do it. I know at times I tried to help you, but I'm, I'm putting all that aside. I'm open to whatever you're going to lay on the table. God, I believe you. I believe what you're saying. My friend. God is no shorter than his word. What he says he will do is foundation to give a fresh yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. And we pray, Father, that the words you have given to speak and to talk are words that will encourage our brother and the city of Zion and all that we'll hear. Just a fresh yes, that after all we've gone through, you have still not forgotten what you promised. We went through it to be made more aware of the power we hold. So I bless you now. I give you glory and honor, and I pray that my brother be blessed. In the, in the mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent, majestic name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for again allowing me. I really pray that at this time that, that God will have said something to encourage your heart. I want you to stop and think that right now, um, hit the cash app and make sure you bless this man of God. 21 years of pastoring and almost 40 some years of being in ministry. Oh, almost 50. The reality is we can never do anything enough to bless him. I do pray that you just blow his cash app up. 
so that he will know that you love him and you respect him. I'm looking for great return. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and grant you everlasting peace. Love you. We thank God for such a mighty word today. After hearing that word, God made me call on you to join the body of Christ. So if you are accepting Christ for the first time today, you can go ahead and click on the private prayer form that you see pinned in the comments. Enter your information there and someone will reach for you and help you to begin your journey with the body of Christ. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You may be saved but need a church home. If you find yourself in that place, the city of Zion wants to be your church, and Talmadge Javon Thomas wants to be your pastor. So go ahead and fill out that private prayer form. Or if you just need to agree with someone in prayer, fill out the form. We will pray with you, and we will pray for you. God bless you. It is time now for us to continue with these same parts of worship in our giving. It's first fruit season, so we want to remember during our times of giving to give our first fruit, which is separate from our tithes and offerings. The first fruit is brought for the man of God to wave before the Lord and to pronounce the blessing over your house. So we want to make sure that we set aside our first fruit offerings during this season. If you want to give your tithe, give your offering, give your first fruit, we have one of three ways that you can select, and that information is pinned on the screen. You can mail your gift to 701 Fans, or you can cash out your gift to dollar sign C-O-Z-M-T Zion Church, or you can give online by texting the word citizen to 71441. But whatever way you choose to give, remember, it's not equal in giving, but equal in sacrifice. And as you choose to sow your seed into the ground of City of Zion Church, we want to remind you that you are sowing into good soil. We continue to serve the Lord, to serve our community outside the sanctuary, even while we're not here. This coming up Saturday, we want you to tell everybody you know to come out as we give away. Give away 2,600 boxes of food. Tell your cousins, tell your co-workers, tell your family and friends. Everybody has to eat, so make sure you tell everyone you know to come out. You drive up, we load up the car with the food boxes, and you just pull off. You don't even have to get out of the car. And if you want to volunteer or bring some people with you to volunteer, we can use all the hands we can get. So remember, God loves a cheerful giver, and we hope to see you this Saturday. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for the time that you have blessed us to be together in your presence. We thank you for the words that we were left with. We pray that as we carry the sermon into this week, that we will be mindful of those that we encounter. And even if the sermon wasn't for us today, that it will be kept in our faith file so that when we need to pull it out of our back pockets for us, or even to pass it on to someone that we may encounter this week, that we would have it. Our prayer is that no matter how this week goes for us, that we would not forget to give you the honor that you so rightly deserve. We thank you for getting us through this past week, regardless of what we've had to endure, for we know that everything that happens is either allowed by you or sent from you, so it happened for a reason. Increase our discernment and tune our ears to your mouth so that we would know your voice, Father. As we seek you for the city, our prayer is that throughout everything, we wouldn't be blind to the things that we or other people might say or do that could hurt others. According to your word in Proverbs 21, let us not be the reason that people turn away from you. Remind us to think before we do or say anything that will cause offense or hurt others because we know what you desire from us. Father, we ask a double portion of grace for our leader, Pastor Talmadge Thomas. Continue to give him courage to step out on every word or forward that you have given him. Even when it doesn't look like you promised, God, allow us to trust him. Allow him to trust you unwavering. Continue to pour out your oil of anointing 
over everything that pertains to the gift that you have placed within him. God, we just thank you for life, breath, and health. In your name, we pray and believe that it is so. Amen.